Aloha, Dr. Glenn here, your Wizard of Eyes, your healing wizard. So, uh, I hope you got some good practice, beginning to uh, notice that your peripheral vision can indeed be with you more fully, more of the time. That's your ground, your foundation. That's, you know, as you practice these skills, these different levels of development, they will become part of you. You do not have to always keep practicing, but you always want to keep checking in. And that will be your clue. If you know you get into a stress situation, that's a perfect time to take a, a vision break, to expand your periphery, to open up the breathing, get yourself into a more relaxed state. You're going to function better. You're going to feel better. You're going to be healthier and maintain that health longer for greater quality of life and longevity. Uh, and, and you get to take this with you. So better afterlife forever. This is the, the most significant thing that you can develop in life is your visual ability. We're visual beings. 90% of what we learn comes through the eyes. 80% uh, of the, the new part, you know, neocortex, the new part of the brain is, is, is directly related to visual function. And, and literally two-thirds of all the data coming into the brain in any given second when we're awake or eyes open is through the two eyes. So one eye equivalent to every non-visual fiber coming in and out of the, out of the brain. So that was peripheral vision. We've taken in the vision. We've breathed it in. We've taken in this not-self, this entire universe, the whole Hubble sphere out to the stars. And now it's inside of us. It's created a fractal through its energetic focusing and reflection and, and, and channeling within the biology. And the spirit inhabiting that biology in the bio body suit, uh, we like to say, is now experiencing that. And what's the next step? The next step is to make it our own, to own it. Because when you're just simply aware, like the deer in the forest, seeing the motion, seeing if there's a predator, it's a reflex level, it's just happening. It's not, we haven't overlaid ourselves on it yet. It just is, it's what's coming in. But even by the time we see it, we've over overlaid ourselves on it. We can't help but do that. But we, by exploring that process, we can become the master of it rather than just at the effect of it. So once you've breathed in the light, what is it that we do? We, it touches us. Vision, light, it touches us most deeply. We, we say God is light and God is love. Well, it goes to the heart, like the breath from the lungs goes to the heart to be pumped to the body. It's received first by the heart and, and comes into the field, the energy field, the electromagnetic field of the heart is the strongest magnetic, electro electromagnetic field of the body, just as the electrical field of the retina is the strongest dipole, the strongest electrical field in the body is from the retina. And it polarizes with the liver, which we know in Oriental medicine is, is the strongest internal connection with the eyes. Uh, so so we, we're taking in the light, we're seeing, seeing it all, allowing it all in, and now we're owning it. It is us, it is you. What you see is literally you in the sense you're seeing it here. All the light that you see is happening in the soul, experienced by the soul in coordination with the biological activity, but it's the waveforms of light in the soul, which is a dark light or a dark energy form. As we get into uh, the course, I'll be speaking about concepts which are integrated from my clinical theory of everything, which looks at the universe and how it works on a clinical level, on a, on a practical level as a spirit, as a being here. Uh, so it answers many of the questions, the age-old questions like about time and the arrow of time and causality and all these things. We eventually, and I have other courses and videos that if you're interested, you can look more deeply into those things. But uh, I will sometimes mention as an aside that, that uh, there's more on that. And there's a reason that I'm saying these things that, that makes sense out of the amazing experience of life, the miracle of life, the miracle of vision. So, and, and, and I'm not the first one to think all these things, but 
that I know of the first one to put it all in one package. For example, the Greeks said that vision, they saw vision as a ray coming from the eye to the object that we look at. Well, what does modern physics say? The photon that we see in the physics apparatus out there doesn't become a photon until our, our consciousness, the coherent, as, as I interpret it, the coherent energy ray, the, the dark energy that we can't measure with the laboratory instrument, but we can see with the mind's eye, that when that reaches the object of regard, the, quant, the quantization, the quantum appears. We create that out here in the objective space. So it's your perception by actually receiving it, you know, in receiving it, the gift is paid for, it becomes yours, it's, it, it's owned. And it's a spiritual saying that, that the full payment for every gift is appreciation. And that'll be the next step uh, when we get into the actual focusing act. Uh, but it's all wrapped up in the heart, both of these level two and level three, the attention mechanism and the focusing mechanism are very closely related and actually was quite a challenge in the modeling of this to, to tease that apart because attention in level one, you were unfocusing your attention, right? intentionally attending to the whole, the ground rather than the figure, the whole rather than the part, the periphery rather than the center. Right. So, when we attend, our, our attention mechanism is where our heart is. It's love, and God is love, God is light. When we focus our heart on vision, when we put our heart into seeing, we're literally, we're, we're loving and appreciating and receiving and owning the entire universe, the entire space, it's all us, it's all you. So that's why, you know, judge not lest you be judged. What can you judge? Everything that you're experiencing, you're experiencing within yourself. And yes, you're projecting it out into the consensual space and your perception, that, that outward ray of, of the Greek philosophers that we now know also exists in, in physics, modern physics, that that is affecting the world. Your thoughts, your feelings, all affect the world. So the attention, we're bringing it into ourselves. Think of the skin, where you, you can see your skin, but now feel it as well. Feel your feet. Now you're not seeing your feet, but you can see them in your mind's eye, and we're gonna get into that act of visualization much more. But for right now, if you just feel the skin of your whole body, and feel the space of you within the body, and see the space outside your body as well as seeing the skin. The skin is where it all comes together. Some of our, our, our most most honored teachers in vision development, uh, Jerry Getman, optometrist, developmental optometrist, was very fond of saying that vision develops under the tutelage, the teaching of active touch. Watch a baby. As the baby's learning, as you were learning to see as a baby, you touch things. You touch them with your sense of touch in the mouth and the tongue, where we have even more sense of, of touch than the fingers. And so we're gathering all that texture information. When you see texture from a distance, you can see the texture, can't you? You can feel it with your mind. Your mind is there because there is happening here. In, in the different parts of the brain, and they're all coordin coordinating together, firing together. We'll talk more about the, the integration, the timing of that. Again, it's covered in the, in the clinical theory of everything in, in greater detail uh, for those who want to, to go there into the, the theory. But the experience is that we are going for simultaneity, for integration, for coherence, for coordination, basically, of all the parts. Not, I'm looking so I don't feel. Well, I'm looking for my keys. Oh, so I didn't feel them in, in my hand, right? People do have these experiences. You may be one. Why? Because we shut down, as I mentioned in part one, uh, level one, that under stress, or the harder we look, the less we see. 
the more stressed we are, the less efficient we are. The more we try to, oh, to, to force ourselves to learn, the less we remember. Okay, so we want to stay in this centered, balanced place, and the heart is central to that. It's the core. Core means heart. It's, it, it exists near the center of the body, uh, and it's in the center of the chest, and it's the center of the electromagnetic field of the body, it's the center of our emotions, and it's the center of consciousness in that it's the integrative part. It's the part that can relate, you know, can feel, can have compassion for the part of us that maybe is angry, or the part that's afraid, or the part that's worrying, or the part that's, you know, separate in that way. That when we bring heart to that separation, we heal the separation, we unify. It's the unifying part. And, and, and we draw that from Oriental medicine. Wonderful, wonderful observation of truth uh, from many thousands of, year, of years ago. Uh, so our attention, our focus, our centering is in the heart. We're feeling the space in the body, the space of feeling of, of posture and movement, the feeling of sensation of touch, of the feet on the floor, of, of the fingers touching each other, of the clothing touching the body, hair, uh, you know, everything we feel, if we can feel that simultaneously, that's the level one, like the peripheral vision, opening it up, feeling the whole body, and the level two is bringing our attention to a central point, and as a starting point, we're going to make that central point the heart, because it serves a crucial function of integration, of helping to create coherence throughout your experience, throughout your vision and other senses, your thinking, and the higher level functions that we'll be working on in this course and following courses.